So now we're going to discuss multi-output linear models. So just as before, we're going to have input-output pairs, okay, x1, y1, up to xn, yn. And we're going to want to predict the y's from the x's. But in this section, we're going to consider the case where the y's are also vectors. So let's suppose we've got the x's are in our p, and the y's are in our q, the q-dimensional outputs. And let's suppose we've got a model of the form that yi is, let's call it capital B now, uh, transpose x i plus epsilon i. Okay. So now yi, this is um, a q by 1 matrix, uh, vector. Uh, b is a q by p vector of coefficients. x is a p by 1 vector of covariates. Now we must have uh, epsilon i being a q by 1 vector. So b here, capital B, is a p by q, because we had um, b transposed over here. Okay, So b is p by q matrix of coefficients. Now we can write this in matrix form as y. Well, I don't underline the matrix. So y is x, b, plus capital E, let's say where y now is just as the x's we've stacked the observations as the rows. Okay, so the first one, row is y1 transposed, second row is y2 transposed, last row is yn transposed. So this is x, so that's x1 transposed, xn transposed. Now the b's, we can think about this as, let's write this in terms of columns. Okay, so let's have the first column be beta 1, so that's going to be like our beta 1 before. Beta 2, down to beta Q. We need Q of them if there's Q outputs. Okay, our uh, error term is just going to be epsilon uh, uh, 1, 1, down to epsilon 1, Q, epsilon N1, down to epsilon N. Q. Okay, now a, a common assumption to make here is that the errors epsilon 1 up to epsilon n, remember these are all of dimension Q, that these are IID with a multivariate normal distribution of dimension P, so that should be the dimension Q, okay. zero mean and covariance matrix sigma that we need to estimate. Now, it's not difficult to prove this, but we're not going to prove it. Uh, the proposition is that the maximum likelihood estimator of B here is B hat, which is X transposed X inverse X transposed Y. Now, as I say, this isn't difficult to prove, but we're not going to prove it because it's just a bit messy, okay? And it's not particularly informative. But what I want you to note is that if we write in what Y looks like here, okay, we had this was Y1 transposed down to Yn transposed. Well, let's write it in terms of the columns instead. This is X transposed X inverse X transposed let's have this as y1 cross to yq. So let's, uh, where yj is y1j down to yj. This is the jth column of y. Okay, so if we look at this, this is very similar to what we had before. So if we think about B hat here, 
Well, B hat, we say we label the columns B1, didn't we? Okay, so if we draw them in, uh, how many did we have? We had um, Q columns. Okay, if we draw them in here. What we can see from this formula is that we're finding that the jth column of the estimated covariance matrix is just x transposed x inverse x transposed y j. So this is the OLS estimator, the ordinary squares estimator for regressing um, y j onto x, projecting y j onto columns of x. So what multi-output linear models do, they just do linear regression a column at a time. Multi-output linear regression just does Q single output linear regressions. Yeah, we just do linear regression on column one, on column two, up to column Q. So it's not a very interesting topic. Okay, so we're not going to talk much more about it because um, you know we, we can make it slightly more interesting by doing statistical hyperparameter uh, parameter estimation and so on. But I've never once had cause to use it. I've never really seen it used either. So it's not a particularly useful um, idea. But I just wanted to, to tell you about it so, so that you know that what would happen if we had vector outputs. Yeah. Vector outputs is just univariate uh, uni output uh, linear regression one at a time okay but in r we can still do this and r the command will just work if you you pass it a matrix and you can see how to do that on the example sheets